5,000 meters. Henry Rona with the collegiate record. Lawi Lalang of Arizona with the meet record from three seasons ago. And this young man, Syracuse Junior Justin Knight, or this is Mark Scott, excuse me, he won the 10,000 meters and he is doubling back. He uh, had kind of a mysterious thing happen to him less than a week ago. He, he just fainted and they took him to the hospital and had him checked out, Dwight, and he, everything was fine. This is Justin Knight, and we'll tell you about him, quite a young man. Uh, once the race gets underway, but Syracuse under coach Chris Fox has developed some outstanding distance runners and they a couple of years ago won the NCAA Division One cross country championship title. So 12 and a half laps of the track and these conditions are probably pretty conducive for 5000 meter running save the breeze that they are probably running into as they come up the finishing stretch and when they reach the end of the straightaway they will have 12 laps remaining 24 athletes 12 that qualified through from the West Regionals in Austin Texas two year two weeks ago and 12 that qualified from the Eastern Regionals at Lexington, Kentucky two weeks ago. And the top eight that finish in all of the track events here become automatically NCAA All-Americans, first team All-Americans. And there'll be eight out of this competition, 24 athletes lined up here, all have started. If somebody can't make it, they reach down one more step down in that region to make sure there are 24 that get invited here to Eugene for the actual championships. Pace, this is developed oftentimes in distance races like this, they become very tactical. And the pace was really quite slow. We're talking about a 450 pace here per mile is what they're jogging at. And for these guys, uh, they certainly are playing into the hands of a few guys here. I'm, I'm not really sure why if you've got an, only an outside chance to finish in the top five, six, or seven, uh, that you would allow this to happen. 67 seconds for the first lap, a little faster than I thought. It's Eamon Terrer of Campbell who's in the lead, lead but it's sort of a, uh, an iffy type of lead. Uh, right next to him, just off his, his left, with the number 24 on his hip, that is Syracuse junior Justin Knight. He learned from his 10th place finish here last year in the 5,000 meters. I was in like maybe third or fourth place with a lap to go and then I don't know I, I kind of ran out of energy towards then and I came in tenth but um that was just another learning curve too I realized that um so that's throughout that season I might have pushed myself a little bit too hard during indoors tripling at ACC's um I'm pretty new to running and I don't think my body was necessarily ready for that even though I was working out really well and I think just transitioning to this year I've been more cautious with the way I'm racing and what events I do and I'm feeling 50 times better than before. <laughs> 50 times, that's really something. He didn't start track and field until his sophomore year uh, at St. Michael's High School in Vaughan, Ontario. He's Canadian. And in two years, two years later as a senior, he ran 359.57 seconds for the mile. Wow. Very few people have ever done that. The legendary Jim Ryan did not accomplish that uh, that quickly. So he's shown his potential, and they, he just contributed mightily when they won the NCAA championship. And they are really jogging here at this point. I don't know who's going to step it up and break the pace open, but uh, this, is, this looks like a, a run in the pre-trail right now. Well, though Jill uh, promised that we would not have rain during the actual events today, uh, it's coming down pretty well down there. And when you add in the fact that it's 55 or less degrees down on the track. I see Jill under her big umbrella. Uh, <laughs> what's it like down there on the track, my dear? Well, apparently I don't have as much pull with the big man upstairs as I thought, you know. It's actually, it's pouring, guys, and it's, it's freezing, the wind is swirly. But you know, it could be a, a benefit for the guys running the 5,000, but it's coming down pretty hard. Not the swirly winds, though. The cool temperature, you're right, Jill. Th th this, is, this is kind of a little like good cross-country weather. From a temperature standpoint, uh, these guys, this has been a long season. It's the culmination of basically when you're a five and 10,000 meter runner, these athletes you're looking at train right through the summer. They may take a break when the season is over with in June or July, almost a year ago, but they get right back after it. They report back to school in very fine shape. 
Some schools have training camps that they'll go away to for 10 days or five days, kind of a bonding experience and get back together to the high mileage. And the cross country races are tough. They usually average about five miles in distance. Uh, the championships are 10 Ks. So then you run long races here during the season. It's a tough season. Uh, so hats off to them and to what they're accomplishing. They are jogging, however, a minute and 19 seconds uh, for the second lap, and then about 118 for the third. So it hasn't really picked up measurably so far. With a little more than eight and a half laps remaining, and freshman Jacob Choga of Middle Tennessee State leading, we're gonna step aside for a moment. When we come back, the conclusion of this men's 5,000 meters. Our next ESPN 30 for 30 film is so good, we had to make it a two-nighter. Celtics Lakers, best of enemies, chronicles the rivalry between these two storied franchises, culminating in the epic battles of the 80s. The three-part documentary premieres Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern with parts one and two back to back, and part three next Wednesday. As always, it's also streaming live on the ESPN app. It's pretty rare when you see two left-handed discus throwers in one competition, much right. less scoring second and third. Absolutely, I can't ever remember seeing that. Okay, back to the 5,000 meters. We've got four and a half laps remaining in this race. Eamon Terrier of Campbell is now back in the driver's seat. Jacob Choga is up there. Justin Knight is up there. Grant Fisher of Stanford as well. And we should start seeing this heat up here pretty quickly. Terrier is a 1350 5,000 meter runner. This is his third visit here to the NCAA championships for Campbell. Stalking everybody, marking time, staying out of trouble, running the shortest distance possible. In second place, Justin Knight, totally comfortable. He has far and away the best 5,000 meter time here. He's run 13 minutes and 17 seconds. Really outstanding time. That is well under four minutes and 20 seconds per mile for 3.1 miles. Since we haven't had uh, much of a chance to talk about it, we need to mention the fact that uh, we would have expected to see Edward Cheserek in this race and in the 10,000 two days ago, he suffered a very bad back injury which he was unable to respond from or recover from. They took it right up to the last second at the regionals two weeks ago. He just could not go. So he was unable to add to his incredible 17 NCAA titles, 15 of those an individual and he still ends his Oregon career with an amazing running career, cross country, indoor and outdoor track. Our hats off to Edward Cheserek, who will make a great pro. Grant Fisher from Stanford has himself in great position, huge star in high school, and has continued his improvement at Stanford. He is running right now in second place in the maroon right behind Knight, got himself in good position. Clayton Young from Brigham Young University is in third. Things have really stretched out over the last lap. Justin Knight now leading for Syracuse. Grant Fisher right there. Clayton Young of BYU. Eamon Terrer of Campbell still up there. And they are seriously running now. Well, they dropped things down to a 62 second plus 400 meters. And you've got to do this. You know, you can have the 13-17 uh, ability that transcends everybody else out there as Knight does. But if it's really slow, you put yourself in potential peril with somebody who has the ability to outkick you. And you don't want eight guys lurking, some of whom you don't know their raw speed over, let's say, 600 meters. So he's trying to finally garret a few of these guys and, and, and move away. John Tressel up there from Colorado. Two laps remaining now, and they're bunching up the top eight, I would say, maybe even eight in the top 10. And now we're seeing Jack Bruce of Arkansas up there in that group as well. We've watched him all season covering the SEC. He is lurking about seventh or eighth place, but there are a dozen plus athletes who are very much in this, and they all seem to be holding back, allowing Justin Knight to continue yeah. to lead. I'm surprised at this a little bit. Now, the pace is still much more honest. We're talking a 64-5 last 400 meters after a 62-plus. 
And these guys are awfully close together at this point in the race. You worry about legs getting tangled up here as they move aside to try and ha find room to run. And Dwight only a lap and a quarter still left to go here. So they got 500 meters. Somebody's got to jump this field here quickly and things have to really explode. Jack Bruce is moving on the outside. We've seen him do this all season long. Clayton Young is right there. 13.39 with a lap to go. Jack Bruce now moving up on the shoulder in second place. Knight is not responding quite yet. Yeah, now he is. Look at Fisher make his move. Got four minute type speed. There goes Jack Bruce because he's responding to the pressure he's getting from Fisher. They push aside Clayton Young and then Justin Knight now going with Fisher. Bruce trying to respond. Knight goes fast enough to get the inside lane and not run a couple of extra steps wide on the turn. Still watch out for the 6-2 countenance of Jack Bruce. He's in full stride and coming on the outside. They don't even see him. Justin Knight, Grant Fisher, and Jack Bruce. And now Fisher cutting him off. Does Bruce have enough to go outside of him? No, it's going to be Grant Fisher, Jack Bruce, and Justin Knight. One, two, three in the men's 5,000. Great, great run. Quite a battle towards the end. That was really a 500-meter race, right? Not a 5,000-meter race. 1435 will not go into the annals as, as fast running here at the NCAA championships. The last 5K of the 10K two nights ago was 14.09. And look at the effort there. Knight does get by. I thought he would be able to hold that this pace. But drafting off him around the final turn, biding his time, running the shortest distance, is Grant Fisher of Stanford. And the soft board then edges out wide. Look at the move being made by huge Jack Bruce. And that's a battle right to the wire. That came down to a matter of turnover. It did. They ran 56 flat, 56 one unofficially or so for the last 400 meters of the 5K. And there's the official results. Grant Fisher winning it in 14.35.60. Jack Bruce just ran out of real estate. Justin Knight of Syracuse. Well, he was 10th last year. He's third this year. Mark Scott, as I mentioned, trying to double back from the 10,000, gets fourth here in the 5,000.